Hello, everyone. Welcome to the top four of this League Cup in Poughkeepsie, New York at Champion Gaming. We do have myself on the right playing uh, Intellion VMAX, Urshifu VMAX, the Rapid Strike Box that won NAIC, but it is my own list that I played at NAIC and was the second highest performing Rapid Strike deck at that tournament. Uh, at 163rd place. Uh, and we have our opponent here on the left is Tori. Uh, has been playing Gardevoir for quite a while. Uh, pretty much this entire format. And has been doing fairly decently with it. Uh, some tournaments seem to be hit or miss. But he does really hot at the tournaments where he uh, does hot at. Um, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure he has a challenge. Maybe second place with this deck in this format. I think he's only gone to a couple of things. At least a couple of the ones that I've been to. Uh, it does start with a Ralts, the memory skip one. That is something that is really fun for me to try to pick off turn two with Yoga Loop if I get really lucky. Um, but I do have to go first in order for that to happen. And as you can see, Tori is going first. Do apologize for the glare on the Ralts, but it is still easy to tell that those are Ralts did move the camera to a different position uh, for this top four match so that they could have a judge on this top four match and a judge on the other top four match. They had two judges. Why not have one at each table? So uh, gets the uh, gets two Ralts plus the Greninja down, is able to get a Zacian and uses Roar the Sword to put an energy on itself. No energy to hard attach for turn. Uh, only energy that he had was the one that he used for the... Uh, Greninja ability, uh, and he doesn't really have to fear anything from me this turn. I cannot attack on my first turn of the game. So, uh, that's how that is. So, uh, Tori, uh, if he gets rare candy Gardevoir, he can get a knockout on the first turn. Uh, but during this turn, uh, with the way that my hand is set up, I kind of have to play it in a way that, like, I don't want to put the stadium down right now and retreat into Remoraid. But I think I should have in hindsight. So I do nest ball for a Remoraid so that I have two in play in case one of them does get knocked out. And I think if I were to have gone for that play. I think, yeah, I think getting the two Remoraid means that I should have retreated into it. And this is also another misplay I make. I grab the Battle VIP Pass and Octillery for next turn because, of course, I'm loading up my bench pretty full. Uh, but I already have an Octillery in hand and forgot that it was there. Uh, I knew there was a blue Pokemon in my hand, but for some reason I thought it was the Intellion VMAX. So I should have grabbed Intellion VMAX here. Uh, for the next turn off of this Irida. Because I don't need another bench Pokemon. There is no fourth Intellion V in the deck. I already got both the Remoraids out. So. Uh, maybe I could have Nest Balled the Remoraid. Instead of the Remoraid into maybe the uh, Radiant Alakazam. But because I did have it uh, bossed up a couple of times in a uh, previous round of this tournament. I did decide against doing that here. Uh, getting it down early. I wanted to get it down the turn I needed it. So being a little conservative in that play there. We do see the first Curlia come down from Tori playing those nice pre-release promo Curlia. And we are going to Ultra Ball away. The Manaphy is a very interesting decision from Tori as well. I think since there are no Urshifu VMAX in play, it's fine. Uh, he thinks it's fine to get rid of the Manaphy, but... I could always Yoga Loop the turn I put down the Urshifu V and then evolve the Urshifu V into V Max, Melanie to it, and Rapid Flow. So I think he's just saying, hey, I'm not really fearing you right now. So it's kind of the same way that I didn't put the stadium down and retreat into the Remoraid. I think we're just like kind of like sizing each other up, seeing exactly what we're going to do here. But if he does get Rare Candy Guardy, because he does have the Zacian here, he would actually be able to potentially knock out my Intellion V. And I would much rather have had the uh, Remoraid get discarded. But I'm so tentative to put the... Or hesitant, I guess is the better word. To put the Stadium in play because I only have three. Uh, I may have prized one as well this game. I, I don't... I, I can't remember which games I prized it and which ones I didn't. It would be nice to have a prize cam, I'm not going to lie, but... 
I think it takes away from the action too much to have that as well. So I do get Ionode. My double Octillery go to the bottom of my deck. So that turn one misplay of searching for the Octillery is really coming back to bite me. And we see Rare Candy Gardevoir EX. And I'm like, well, great. Uh, so I'm assuming here he's going to attack with the Gardevoir. Uh, but he actually has uh, more than enough energy. <laughs> I think he, or enough energy in the discard pile. So he has, so that's five energy he could have total on his Zacian. 5 times 3 is 150, plus 60 is 210, so he has exactly enough energy in his discard pile. Tori is deciding whether or not he wants to play the Temple of Sinnoh, because that does shut off my Rapid Strike energy. Uh, but of course, if he does put that down now, he is risking that I do play another Stadium. So, again, had I played that Stadium on the last turn, it would have been discarded this turn because of the Temple of Sinnoh. And I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure I have my stadiums for, at the very least, the Temple of Sinnoh. And more so for uh, the free retreat. And we see the Zacian does take the turn to KO for two prizes. Ends up going down to four remaining. Before I'm really able to do anything, I evolve into the Intellion VMAX. I do have a Heavy Ball here, so I am able to look at my prize cards. That is Rapid Strike Energy. Uh, research... Uh, the Radiant Alakazam was there. I think that's why I got the second Remoraid. Uh, I can't really see what the other ones are. I do have a wider angle view than what you guys see on the screen. I just try to show you uh, not half of the table. Uh, so we are going to grab the Radiant Alakazam out of those prize cards. We're going to shuffle up here. So I do offer the cut to Tori. He is actually going to put them out for me. He doesn't really care about cutting. He's a nice guy. So I put the Radiant Alakazam down now. Again, still a little afraid of it getting bossed up, but it's fine. I'm going to use my Double Gunner from my active Intellion VMAX to put two damage counters onto both of the Curlias that are in play on my opponent's side. Uh, basically just hoping that they do not evolve on this next turn. I did see that Tori did uh, have the Temple of Sinnoh in hand because he almost played it. But I am going to research here so I might as well put the Tower of Waters in play. Because otherwise it's going to go away. And I do draw a double Rapid Strike energy along with my Drapion. Now before this tournament I was thinking of taking the Drapion out for either a third Forest Seal Stone or a Boss's Orders or a Manaphy uh, because those cards could be a little bit more relevant in certain matchups and I still think that I might do that uh, because I had a challenge I did still beat a Mew VMAX without having to use Drapion. Uh, I did get very lucky he put all his Fusion Strike energies on two Mew VMAX so I was able to use my uh, Double Gunners uh, to... Uh, I was able to Yoga Loop a Meloetta and then Rapid Flow a Genesect and the Mew V Max for a game. So uh, that was pretty nice. Uh, but I still think that for the Mew matchup, I still need that one Drapion. So really depends more so of a meta call. I'm going to use that Alakazam to move two damage counters to the Curlia. Uh, we have used uh, two of the Intellion abilities. So we are 20 short of being able to Yoga Loop the Curlia. But of course, we don't have the uh, way to get to the Metacham in hand. So had I drawn maybe Metacham instead of Drapion, I would have been able to Yoga Loop the Curlia, get an extra turn, and it would have been very good for me. But unfortunately, of course, did not get there. I would have been able to take uh, three prize cards to be able to go ahead in the prize trade. Uh, and also removing one of the Curlias means that's one less card that can become a Gardevoir EX or just the regular Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Uh, both of which have a little too much HP to deal with with just uh, the abilities of the Intellion VMAX. So we are going to be using our double Curlias here. Tori is really great about tapping those cards to make sure that uh, we are aware of what abilities have been used and what have been not used yet. Uh, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, I try, uh, when I'm playing against, like, Mew VMAX, I try to keep track of the Genesect abilities. When I play against Guardi, I try to keep track of the Curlia abilities. And I'll keep, like, a die on the side of the playmat. Like, not on the playmat, but right on the side. And I'll count up with the dice to make sure I'm tracking how many of those abilities are used. But if my opponent's just gonna tap them like that, uh, just, there's no need. We're both very much aware. 
We do use the Shining Arcana here after we evolve into that. We are able to put one energy onto this Gardevoir EX for free off of those top two cards. And here is the Fog Crystal. Gonna search for another Psychic Energy, probably really just to thin the deck at this point. I think he has plenty of energies in the discard pile. He doesn't necessarily need too many more. He also has the Zacian V in hand here. So I do believe he must be playing two Zacian Vs. Uh, I've been a little bit more of a fan of playing one with a heavy ball uh, myself, but uh, looks like he's opted to go back to two. So maybe we have a 59 card list. Like my, I think my guardy might be the same 59 cards as his. Cause he must not be playing the heavy ball. Because the heavy ball can always get you a Ralts too. And you can see your prize cards turn one, and I value the information from that. And you play two Super Rods anyway. Uh, I think if you need to use uh, Zacian three, uh, th uh, three turns in a row, uh, that's asking for a lot anyway. Well, I guess it does like help with the consistency of setting up Zacian with the Sky Seal Stone, which I know he is playing. I think I'm I'm specifically the reason why he plays Sky Seal Stone. It's because he and Chris usually test together a lot. Uh, Chris, who we saw on the third round of this tournament, and uh, the, they always know they have to hard counter me because otherwise I'm gonna tear them apart with my weird stuff. I mean, they're just at, at this point they're aware that I'm probably gonna bring Rapid Strike to every tournament I go to, so they just want to tech for Rapid Strike. But it's good for Arceus too, so no reason not to play the Sky Seal Stone in my opinion. So here we go, we're gonna go for the Zacian yet again, and we have plenty of energies. We might be able to go for the one shot this turn. We evolve into a second Gardevoir EX to protect himself from the Yoga Loop that Curlia was at 20 HP remaining, remember? And we need a total of, what is it, nine energies? Or eight energies, six, eight, nine. Yeah, we need nine energies to one shot one of my uh, Intellian VMAX. <coughs> and he does go for that. Now, the cool thing about this play is if I still had enough Intellian VMAXs in play and my escape rope and Yoga Loop, I could potentially Yoga Loop a Zacian V because it puts so much damage, uh, so many damage counters on itself with the Gardevoir to be able to do that. But I think at this point, Tori goes down to one prize remaining. I can take two here by knocking out the Zacian. And the only thing I can do is maybe Iono him. Do I even have the Iono in hand? Do I have an Ultra Ball to be able to get the Luminian? Uh, so that, again, that is another reason why I am playing uh, the heavier count of Iono in the deck. Is because if I get to, get to a situation like this, if you see Tori here, he's got one Shining Arcana Gardevoir and one Curlia in play, so he can draw an additional four cards per turn, plus the Radiant Greninja as well. So he can draw an additional six cards per turn. So even if I, I Iono him to one, he draws for a turn, that's two, and then he draws an additional six cards, he sees eight cards deep into his deck. And if he's holding on to something that he needs, I'd rather have that on the bottom. So I'm just trying to figure out any sort of way that I can do this. I know that we have a 60 minute clock for best of three during this top cut. I do attach to the Intellion VMAX. I'm gonna get rid of the Temple of Sinnoh that was put down. So my special energies reactivate and it's a double fighting water energy now. And I do Irida here. I search for an Octillery. Uh, which would have allowed me to Yoga Loop this turn had that Gardevoir not evolved into the EX. So let's say that, uh, you know, one of those prize cards that was just taken or uh, or the last prize card remaining was the Gardevoir EX. I would actually be able to Yoga Loop here uh, and then maybe start setting up an Urshifu VMAX to take the game on the next turn. Uh, would be pretty sweet, uh, especially since that, you know, that Manaphy is not in play. Uh, but I think I'm just too many cards short of being able to piece something like that together. See, I do have... I think I have the research there. Oh, uh, but... I don't know. 
The Irida guaranteed me the Octillery. I guess I could have researched and just drew a bunch of cards, tried to set up Yoga Loop, but again, that would have depended on Tori not evolving into the Gardevoir EX. So I think evolving into that Gardevoir EX is what loses me the game here. I just go, I realize that I need to set up Urshifu now uh, and that there's no way that I'll be able to Yoga Loop. So I have to just hope that Tori doesn't get like another Zacian V going this turn. Uh, I could always potentially try to double gunner down the Gardevoir, uh, uh, the Shining Arcana Gardevoir, as well as the Curlia, so that they can't get to enough energy on them. They can only accelerate six energies to themselves because of how much HP they have. If you're playing Champions Festival, it could be eight, but... Uh, so we are going to go for the double gunner. See, I am weakening those so that they cannot get that many energy cards to them. I want to make sure that they also can't one-shot the Urshifu if I can actually even get to that point. Uh, although I think that that's extremely unlikely. I'm going to move 20 damage off the active to one of the bench Pokemon. Because again, I do know that I'm going to be able to take the knockout either way with my active Pokemon here. I return the energy to my hand to conserve it in case maybe I get Ionode or something this turn. Uh, it'll go back into the deck uh, so that I can attach it to the Urshifu. And then uh, he just shows me the boss's orders for game. So he could have knocked out any of my Pokemon with any of his Pokemon. Uh, so very clean game one for Tori there. Uh, nothing really much I could do. Again, he just drew way too hot. He had the uh, turn two Candy Guardy. And again, uh, not retreating into that Remoraid was a pretty big misplay. But as you could have seen over the course of that game too, how many times I put a stadium down and how many times Tori put a stadium down. He did play that Temple of Sinnoh at one point. So he did discard one of my stadiums. But, you know, I think he is playing the Collapse Stadium as well. I'm, I, and, and the Artisan and the Worker. I'm pretty sure he's on all of those. I mean, he might not be on the worker, but we're, uh, we just discussed the game. We're shuffling up. I skip forward a little bit here for you guys so we can go right into game two in this best of three 60 minute match. I start Remoraid this time, uh, learning my lesson a little bit. I do put down the Intellion V and I have, let's see, two rapid strike energies. Yeah, I'm shaking my head. No, you can't see it because it's off your view. Um, but my hand is pretty dead. I have Research, Luminian, Water Energy, Rapid Strike Energy, Temple uh, of Waters, or Tower of Waters, sorry. Uh, and that's it. I, I literally have nothing else. So I just pass from here. Uh, Tori is able to play a supporter on his first turn of the game because he is going second. And again, if I want to like turn to Yoga Loop, I really need to be able to get multiple Intellions into play. And I just was not able to get there. Because if he does put down that 60 HP Ralts, that does give me a really, a, a much cleaner way to take a Yoga Loop than having to do it on the 70 HP one. 70 HP one requires me to use two double gunners as well as a... As well as the Radiant Alakazam. But the 60 HP one is just one Intellion in the Radiant Alakazam. So I still can pull it off on this next turn. Especially if I get Ionoed into a much better hand. Or I could just always just research into it too. Uh, that's perfectly fine as well. So of course we see Battle VIP Pass gets two Ralts. Ultra Ball discards two Psychic Energy to get another Ralts. Tori's already got three Ralts in play. And of course, prioritizing all these 70 HP ones. If he only gets three routes this turn, it's going to be them shuffling up that deck. And already has three Psychic Energies in the discard pile. So again, another scary position to be in because he could always get swinging on this next turn if he just has that Rare Candy Guardy. But these decks only generally play two Rare Candy. So he's going to have to find that. He has a Curlia in hand as well as the Temple of Sinnoh. The Zacian V and Iono. Looks like he is going to play the Iono. I think that's definitely the correct choice. Whether my hand is good or not is irrelevant to you yourself setting up your board state in the best possible way. So even if your opponent is bricking, I'd say 9 out of 10 times it is still correct to like play the Iono or Judge and uh, try to help yourself out into a better hand to keep setting up. 
So it looks like Tori does draw the other Zacian V. So yeah, he's definitely playing two copies. I know I have two Zacian, but I don't know where one of them is. Like, I can't find it for the life of me. So I might have to order another one if I want to play two Zacian in my Guardi deck. We are going to see the Retreat. The Mew is going to use its ability, Mysterious Tale, to look at the top six cards of the deck, choose an item card, and put it into the hand. Uh, looks like it's a Battle VIP Pass, uh, along with a whole bunch of nothing else as far as items are concerned. We see Penny. I guess we're the same 58 cards, because I'm not playing Penny either. Maybe he's not playing the Worker. Maybe he's playing just the Penny instead. I prefer the Worker. Yeah, he definitely has the Artisan. I see it in there. So, Battle VIP Pass is going to get the last Ralts. Tori's really contemplating putting this down because he knows uh, about the Yoga Loop. He's like, I've tested... I'm sure he's like, I've tested this matchup. I know you can turn two Yoga Loop me. In my opinion, these are the two best decks of the format. And Lost Box, I'd say, would be in the top three as well. So I'm going to Ultra Ball here. Uh, Tori did just pass. Uh, doesn't have too much going on in hand. He has the Pal Pad. He has the Zacian. I think he saved a Psychic Energy for use with the Radiant Greninja next turn. Smart. Uh, he doesn't need that on any of his Pokemon right now. I Ultra Ball, getting rid of an Urshifu VMAX and a Clara in order to get the Octillery. I Ultra Ball again, getting rid of a Water Energy and an Energy Retrieval. A very, very clunky opening for me. And I think here... Yeah, I th I'm thinking of going for the Lumin... I'm deciding between the Luminian or using the... Uh, Octillery to Rapid Strike Search for the Karina's Focus. And I think the correct play is to go for the Karina's Focus and just hope that off that one last card I am able to just draw pretty hot. Uh, otherwise I would have to put the Luminian into play which clogs up a bench spot. That can matter a lot. Usually you really only want to use the Luminian for the um for the uh, Melanie, so that you can rapid flow two turns in a row. And here comes the Karina's Focus. So I'm going to have to draw the Stadium at the very least this turn. Uh, so that's what's scary about getting the Karina's Focus with Octillery, is you always seem to have to draw into the Stadium. Uh, because you, you have to move that Pokemon. See, now Tori didn't... Uh, take a knockout on this turn because of course I went first he, there was no way he could have done it um, but I guess maybe starting the Intellion going first would have been the better idea because then I wouldn't have to find the stadium this turn so I guess that's another misplay for me in hindsight watching this back but I guess if I'm going second start the Remoraid if I'm going first start the Intellion in this matchup so that's another reason why I love doing these videos is that it's a learning experience both for you and for myself uh, to see what players, including myself, are doing right and wrong. Uh, we're all not perfect, uh, but I definitely would have loved to show you me going 3-0 at two different league challenges. <laughs> Wait, did I even lose a single game at that league challenge? No, I went... I did not drop a single game at either League Challenge. The first one was best 2 of 3. I went 6 and 0 on games. And then the other one was a best of 1. I went 3 and 0 on games. So we are going to attack with the Intellion VMAX here after we use our Double Gunner to set up some knockouts. I think with my hand, you can see there is a Metacham in that hand. The Karina's Focus was actually one card short of allowing me to Yoga Loop. Um, I think I was missing I was missing one card, and it was, I wanna say the Alakazam. No, it was the Rapid Strike Energy. Yeah, I have Alakazam 
and Metacham in hand right now, I could, uh, I already attached that Rapid Strike energy th that's on there the previous turn. If I had drawn into another Rapid Strike energy with that hand, I could have used the Alakazam to move the two from the one Ralts to the 60 HP one and then retreat Yoga Loop uh, with the Metacham and then be able to take an additional turn. And I would have been able to, at the very least, knock out two Ralts back to back. And that would have been a pretty huge play for me. Because uh, then that would still require Tori to get Rare Candy Guardy to uh, retaliate there. And he'd have a whole lot... He'd have two less Curlia in play. Uh, I had to knock out the Mew instead. So, like, maybe I could have found, like, Escape Rope to maybe force up at least the Greninja. Yeah, because I did. I knocked out the Mew. Yes, I mean, that's one less time you could use refinement at the very least. So the Karina's focus being one card short. and I, But again, I could have used the Alakazam. Or no, the... Uh, the I could have used the Luminian to grab the research to draw one more card. And had the cards in deck been the same, as long as that next card on top of the deck was the Rapid Strike Energy, we would have gotten there. But there's no way to know. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. The Forest Seal Stone was the prize card. The Forest Seal Stone that was in my hand was the prize card. I'm like, wait, am I stupid? No, I did not have the Forest Seal Stone. I took that off the prize cards. Had I had that off that hand, I could have just searched <laughs> for the Rapid Strike Energy I needed. And that's another reason why I think I might want to go to three Forest Seal Stones in the future. Just having a better odds of finding that. Uh, we see Tori puts down the Artisan here. Uh, I could always use that to grab a second Remoraid out of my deck. That's the only card I can search for with it. Uh, Tori is, of course, searching his deck with that Artisan. And he sees that the Rare Candy Gardevoir is the top two cards of the deck. So he's like, oh, I should have just used Refinement first. But I wanted to check my deck to see if such and such card was in there. And I'm 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 laughing because I'm pretty happy in this situation uh, that that's happening. I did uh, I do not want him having rare candy Gardevoir this turn. Uh, but of course, it does play the Iono, so my hand is uh, quite a bit different than it was before. It was really strong before. I still could have gone for the Yoga Loop play on this turn because of course those Curlias cannot evolve again during the same turn. Plus, we have that 60 HP Ralts. And Tori is specifically trying to evolve the 60 HP Ralts into the... Uh, into the EX because he knows that he would rather have the 60 HP Ralts Yoga Looped than one of the 80 HP Curlias because it takes a lot more effort to set up a whole Curlia. So if he gets Rare Candy Guardy, he gets it. And uh, it looks like there is a Rare Candy in hand, and he is going to Ultra Ball. So Fog Crystals for a Psychic Energy. Ultra Ball's away. Two Psychic Energy grabs the Gardevoir EX. Never punished. He is going to be able to Rare Candy into this Gardevoir EX this turn. And if he has nothing else, he can at the very least attack into the Italian VMAX for 190 damage with his active Gardevoir EX. And there's really nothing that I can do to a Gardevoir EX. Like, I have to... Like, if I can weave double gunners in on one, I can two-shot it. Um, but otherwise, I there's no way for me to knock that out in one hit. It'd be really great if there was, like, a Rapid Strike Pokemon uh, that was Darkness-type. That attacked for, like, a double colorless or something. But unfortunately... Uh, it, it no existo. So, uh, we are also going to see the, uh, we are also going to see the, uh, Cresselia come down. So now, Tori does not even have to, uh, go for the attack with the Gardevoir. He's getting to do the even better attack of Moon Glow Reverse. So he can put all of, uh, a lot of the damage that's on his board, uh, onto my Pokemon. And 60 is a magic number that puts me from 320 to 260. 
And that's, you know, that much less energy that Tori needs to have onto a Pokemon. Yeah, I think at this point I told Tori that I had the Yoga Loop last turn, if I just had one more card. So, I look at my prize cards, and there are two Battle VIP Pass in there, as well as a Melanie. Uh, nothing too super relevant. Tori's just checking out my damage markers. Because I have the, the red 5, the medium sized one, and then the uh, tiny orange 10. It actually does look more orange on camera right now than it does IRL, on, in all honesty. So I do evolve into an Intellion VMAX. I think that was my top deck for the turn. I do have an Urshifu V in my hand, but I do not want to put that into play right now. So I'm going to research that away along with an Iono. There's no point in me playing the Iono because my opponent has a two card hand and he's just going to be drawing up with the uh, Curlia anyway. Playing the Iono would uh, really, really help them. So even though I do have to get rid of an Iono and the uh, Intellion VMAX, I still uh, feel a lot more comfortable playing the research here. So I'm going to use my ability Double Gunner. I'm going to put two damage counters on probably what? Two, the two Curlias? Yep. Again, just trying to piece together quite literally anything. I do have an energy retrieval so we can get back the two water energies I've used for Double Gunners back to my hand. And on that last turn, since I did knock out a Mew, I chose not to return the Rapid Strike energy to my hand. It still does 70 if you don't return an energy to your hand. It does 140 if you do, so an additional 70. But now I keep that Rapid Strike energy on my Intellion, and now I don't need to find another one this turn after I got Ionoed, which is pretty great. Uh, it allows me to use my Rapid Strike search for something more relevant, and I'm just counting... And I'm trying to see if I could piece together Yoga Loop this turn. So I have the Rapid Strike Search as well as the Stadium and an Ultra Ball. Um, but again, one card short. If I had, if I had like a Nest Ball here, I could grab the uh, Metacham and the Alakazam, which were both. I own it to the bottom of my deck. I think on the previous turn, I should have at the very least put the Alakazam down onto the bench. Uh, I'm not sure why I didn't. I don't think that there's any world where Tori uh, just bosses it up and stalls. Uh, but I guess he could have because he could just boss it up to stall while continuously using uh, Cresselia's Moonglow Reverse to set up a bunch of different attackers. So, I mean, it's both right and wrong to put it down, but I could have just found Escape Rope, right? I don't think Escape Rope is in my prize cards. Yeah, so had I put the Alakazam down on the last turn, I would actually be able to Yoga Loop here, because I could move uh, 20 from the Gardevoir EX to one of the Curlias. I would, I have the Stadium already, uh, and the... Uh, I could uh, Rapid Strike Search for the Energy and Ultra Ball for the Medicham. And I do use the Artisan here to grab the Remorade. I think this is a misplay too. It is thinning out my deck of a card, but that's clogging another bench space as well. And I'm just really hoping here that Tori does not take a one shot on one of my VMAXs. Well, I guess two shot if you talk about the active. And I have that Drapion in hand again as, uh, as well. So that could have been a boss's orders. Um, but I did, I did play research this turn, so it wouldn't matter until next turn. Or at least for a seal stone. So, you know, if it was for a seal stone, I could have had yoga loop this way as well. So that's just, that's the reasoning why I'm thinking about cutting the Drapion. Even though it just helps so much against Mew. I think that in this format, as long as there's not too much Mew in your area, you can just take that L and move on. Right now in my area, there's zero Lugia and like maybe one to two Mew V maxes per tournament. And they never do well because they always hit the Gardevoirs and lose. And the Gardevoirs are playing Sky Seal Stone as well. So they just need to boss up a Genesect and then one shot a Mew V max and they win the game. It's a pretty easy matchup for them with the Sky Seal Stone. 
Uh, I don't even think Tori is even playing the Spirit Tomb anymore because he just does not fear uh, the Mew or the uh, Alolan Vulpix anymore. So here comes the Zacian coming down and then the Professor's Research discarding. It looks like an Ultra Ball. Uh, not super relevant, not super needed. You should be able to draw into all your evolutions at this point with all the refinements you have anyway. So this is the turn. Tori had a two card hand, draws for turn, and then researches and has three Curlia in play. And spoiler alert, he's also going to find two Shining Arcanas and use both of them as well going down to a two card deck oh wait hang on i'm getting a phone call i got pause sorry guys pause okay so we're back <laughs> i apologize for the brief pause although that's really all it was for you um so we get the level ball here from tori and again yeah he is going to go down from a two card hand to a two card deck instead this turn which is absolutely bonkers and had I just been able to piece together a yoga loop earlier, I think really, I think that would have really, really helped. Also, um, a lot of the uh, Intellian Urshifu decks play, um, they play one less battle VIP pass than I do. I max out at the full four because I want to fill my bench up the first turn. I'm thinking maybe going and switching the nest balls and battle VIP passes. So I have three nest ball, three battle VIP pass. Um, or I could use that slot to put in the boss's orders potentially as well. Um, but then I have so many supporters in the deck. And I still wish I had Iono more often than I do when I'm playing three in Aluminium. So uh, I could still potentially just keep the Drapion in the deck and then cut the one battle VIP pass for the... Uh, fog uh, for the forest seal stone So I'll have to see there's definitely gonna be an additional forest seal stone going in my deck uh, Moving forward at the very least. I just don't I'm not 100% sure which card is getting cut for it at this point But again as you saw that would have really allowed me to yoga loop on this last turn and I'd be in a lot better of a position I still think that this game is very losable for me even though I could have gone for that and yeah, I'm I'm like, you see my hand waving, but I'm like literally laughing about, I'm like, I saw you had two cards in hand and pre pre specifically didn't Iono you. And then you research and then get double Shining Arcana so that you draw two, uh, seven. Um, so they, they've seen, so they had two cards in hand, one card for turn, that's three, plus seven from the research is 10 cards deep. And then plus the three Curlia and two Shining Arcana is another 10 cards deep. He, he saw 20 cards. He drew 18 cards that turn. One for turn, 17 off of the Curlia's Gardevoirs and Research. Absolutely disgusting how this Gardevoir deck works sometimes. And Tori did tell me this is the hottest he's ever drawn with this deck ever. Uh, so, uh, definitely, uh, luck played a big factor there. Even if he drew a little bit more suboptimally than this, even if I got the yoga loop off during this game, I think I'm still unfavored just because of how my start went. I'd have to set up the Urshifu at the same time as the yoga loop in order to have any amount of a chance. Um, but here, when he attacks with the Zacian, this is, this is what could give me the game. So, I still... There still has to be a way for me to move the Zacian to the bench. So, like, if I escape rope it to the bench, double gunner it, that puts it at... So, it's at... Oh, uh, because he, he made a misplay here. So, he didn't need all of that energy on him because of the 60 that was put in play with the Cresselia. Or moved from his board to mine, I should say. So he didn't, he didn't need all of that energy. So now the Zacian's at 120, 160. So he has 80 HP remaining. So if I do double gunner, uh, Alakazam and Yoga Loop, that's still 20 short though. So I still would have had to have one more Intellion VMAX in play. 
And the fact that I just was not able to set up more than just the two Intellions over the course of the game just does not help me. So against Gardevoir, you have to just go heavy in with all the Intellions, get in Remoraid down, and the Radiant Alakazam, and just hope that you can Yoga Loop set up the Urshifu. Because if I could, if I could Yoga Loop the Zacian, or if one of those Guardies was still a Curlia, because of course he evolved every Curlia he had in play last turn. Uh, if I had the Yo Yoga Loop, I could still have a chance here, because I could always G-Max Rapid Flow even the Zacian if I Yoga Loop to Curlia. And they both had both those uh, Shining Arcanas, they had 40 HP on them, so that's another uh, 40 I could have easily done with one Double Gunner plus the uh, plus the Radiant Alakazam. So, unfortunately, Spoonman, not powerful enough here. Um, but again, put not putting him down... Was it was that the previous game? I don't even remember anymore. No, this first turn, second turn, whatever it was, was a huge misplay for me and probably cost me the game. So I'm just trying to piece together any way through this, but uh, I'm at this point I just have to hope that on this next turn I can Yoga Loop or he doesn't get another Zacian set up. So I Ultra Ball for the Luminian, and I'm gonna Luminian for Irida and play it so that Tori goes to a three card, or sorry, Iono. Uh, grab the Iono, we're gonna set his hand to three. All of those cards that are currently in hand will go to the bottom of the deck. Tori's shuffling his hand already, knowing that the, uh, I've already pulled the Iono out of the deck. It's the one that's currently under my left hand. You can't see it at the moment, there it is. But this is my last hope, is just hope that he doesn't set up Zacian V uh, again. Uh, and he does play two. Uh, he's only used the one this game. So he just needs another Zacian V or like the Super Rod, even if he prized one. And then he'll have the game. So we'll just have to hope that he doesn't have it. It's so funny to me that these VMAX Pokemon that used to uh, be talked about for having too much HP have too little these days. It's it's kind of crazy. It boggles my mind. So I'm using my Rapid Strike Search just to thin a card out of the deck. I know that I'm probably losing uh, this next turn anyway. So if he like bosses up the Urshifu and knocks that out instead, he'll go down to one prize, and I just have to maybe hope to Iono him again on the next turn. So I could have gone for that, but I'm gonna go for the Metacham instead, because I think that, I don't even know what I'm thinking at this point, honestly. But I don't know what else there really is for me to do so i think is there another rapid strike energy yeah there is another rapid strike energy in my hand so i can leave the energy on my intellion v max in case the stadium is replaced and i have to hard retreat so just do the 70 have my highest hp pokemon in the active spot and just hope that my opponent does not set up another zashian and, of course, we see Super Rod puts back in Zacian. Fog Crystal gets Zacian. Just off of those four cards that I Ionoed him into. The three for Iono, the one for turn. And he's just able to set up the uh, Zacian, and he takes the game. So, unfortunately, I only end up with top four points. Uh, so, I won the League Challenge the day before. I top four this League Cup. And then, uh, which put me at 69 CP, by the way. Fun fact. And then I win uh, the league challenge that was the, the night after, the Monday night. And uh, that puts me at 84 CP currently. Uh, although one of those events is not uploaded and it doesn't show your championship points anyway. It just shows your play points for some reason. I don't know. Um, so I got to get that one league challenge that I did a few, uh, couple of weeks ago in the sweaty, in the sweat box. <laughs> I got to, I got to see if they can upload that because I don't want those 10 points to be missing. But I should be at 84 CP after this, which is a really heck of a good start for at this point in the in the season. Um, so as always, guys, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. 
all that good stuff. And unfortunately, there is no finals for this. It was Tori, who you see on screen there on the left, versus the guy that I ID'd into cut, the Arceus deck, that it was still either player's game, but one of the three ones got down paired and lost, so it was safe for us to ID mid-match. I took it because that would have given me a good matchup in the finals. And unfortunately, uh, we did not get to the finals, so I don't get to hit that good matchup. But that player starts, uh, that uh, Arceus Giratina player starts Spiritomb both games, and Tori draws not quite as well as he did against me, but still pretty darn well. And he was able to take some three prize Sky Seal Stone turns and all of that. So Tori did end up winning the tournament. So if I'm going to lose to somebody in top four or top eight, you better win the tournament. Otherwise, I'm going to be pissed. So uh, happy that Tori won. Sad that I didn't. That's one less play mat I get to put on my wall. Um, but there are other opportunities. We'll get the we'll get a, a win later in the season.